welcome to another episode of Indie Tales, the most comprehensive independent professional wrestling show on planet Earth. And when I say that, I'm uh, I'm not joking around. Uh, Mac Rips, man, did y'all catch that? Pete, peaceful Pete, chowing down on Mac Rips and pumpkin spice. I'm probably not going to eat the rest of the day after hearing all that. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed the show uh, that uh, Pete presented us with in his perspective. Hey, folks. Hey, good to see you. Uh, <laughs> Phil, uh, you, can catch, uh, you, you can catch some roasted Phil later, maybe. Um, but tonight, we are, uh, we're we're kind of reintroducing some things. It's been a little while uh, since I've been on here uh, hosting in details. So a little shorter episode this evening, nothing wrong with that. But as I said, the most comprehensive. Now you can go out, there, there's a million wrestling podcasts out there. We all know that. And everybody's jumping, trying to get the guys from, you know, WWE, AEW, the legends, many of which we have right here on the TKN network, many of which are in round two of the celebrity tournament. You're going to get to tune in to uh, tomorrow night with a legendary wrestler on that one. Uh, just Let's just cover that real quick. We've got one half of one of the most prolific Golden Age tag teams with Jerry Briscoe is going to be coming in. Uh, he is running up against an MLB pitcher, Bryce Wilson, and none other than TV and film. I don't want to bandy about the term legend, but you, you got to know who this guy is, Todd Bridges. And Todd, if you ever catch this, uh, you were one of my favorites on Celebrity Big Brother, just to say. But that's going to come at you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. sharp, exclusively on the TKN YouTube channel, where you're watching me right now, live and in person. Um, I do want to get to the, the gist of tonight's episode. Inclusion comprehensive is uh, are two of the watchwords for indie tales. And I've said this uh, many times before, we don't leave anybody out. We're not chasing down every WWE, AEW guy or legend. They'll be around. We'll, we'll have some. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't have all these guys floating around TKN. They're not going to stop by and say howdy and, you know, jaw with us a little bit. But I want to go deeper than that. Hey, Chad Dixon, one of my favorite people, man up north there in Canada. Uh, I want to go a little deeper and, you know, look at the folks behind the scenes, the people that put up the ring, the promoters, the referees, the managers, the ticket takers, the ladies in the kitchen. But I'll tell you what, a big aspect of wrestling is who's carrying that strap, who's got the title, whether it's the, the world heavyweight title the legacy title, the U.S. title, intercontinental title, the, the the trash can mafia title. Bunch of federations have all kinds of different things uh, going on. I've uh, you know I've been been uh, privileged to carry a few titles in my uh, thirty years in the business. Probably not as many as I wanted, but you know that's what happens. But you got to think those belts. You can't go down to Walmart and get a decent wrestling belt. Maybe you can, you know, get a little plastic one in the toy section. I think I've seen some federations use those. But, I mean, if you want to portray your promotion or yourself as legitimate, you got to have a good-looking championship belt. So tonight's episode, we're going to focus on a belt maker. Now, if you are still in or attached to the business or network like I am, I would be surprised if I have less than 50 Facebook friends who are belt makers. The vast majority are overseas, uh, Pakistan, India, those places. And uh, I've seen, you know, they, they send me the pictures of their work, how it's done. Oh, looks good. looks legit. But I'm a little old fashioned, too. And uh, no offense to those guys. They're hustling, trying to make a living. I get, you know, probably a Facebook message uh Three, four times a week from one of them. Hey, sir, would you like to, you know, you know, purchase a quality belt or something else? And, uh, you know, I'll get to it in time. Uh, I'm going to get me a retirement belt at uh, at some point. But like I said, I'm a little old fashioned and uh, I believe in buy American whenever you possibly can. Uh, and that's one thing I have not seen are 
a whole lot of US based belt makers, but I do have a friend on Facebook that is. And uh, he's been in the business for quite some time. So we finally sat down uh, here on StreamYard uh, and I interviewed him a while back. Uh, so it's pre recorded segment. And uh, there all there is a bit of a twist to it. Now, I do ask the folks out there in the audience, please be patient with this interview. And as it proceeds, you will see why. But this is to showcase a huge aspect of the independent wrestling business and uh, let you know that if you have the drive and follow the dream, you can make that dream come true just like this gentleman did. So without further ado, I would like to go ahead and play this interview that I did with a U.S. based belt baker just over the border in uh, the great state of Ohio. And then we'll take a few minutes to kick it around when it's all said and done. So settle back, listen up and enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Indie Tales, uh, I am here today with Brad Platt and family, uh, his lovely significant other, Melissa, uh, and her boy, Nathan. They are going to help me have a conversation with Brad. Brad uh, is a renowned U.S. belt maker for the independent wrestling uh, industry. Uh, he is, however, hearing impaired, and uh, he, uh, he communicates through ALS, which I do not, and that's, a, that's my shame. Uh, but between Melissa and Nathan, we're going to ask him some questions and uh, see what it is, uh, you know, being a belt maker on the independent circuit. Uh, welcome to Indie Tales, Brad, Melissa, and Nathan. Very glad to have you. So, belts, wrestling really can't survive without title belts. I mean, what would we do? Run around trading golden chalices, stuff like that? Probably not. So, belts are a part of it. And belt makers have come to the forefront of the industry, especially on my page. I think there's probably 50 belt makers just on my page. The interesting thing about you, though, Brad, you're not in Pakistan or, or Uzbekistan. You're right here in the Midwest uh, of the United States. And so I want to ask you a few questions. Uh, first off, if you could tell me your history with getting into belt making up to where you're at today. Yeah, your history. I was fascinated in watching WWE when I was little. I was interested in it, making it. I learned to read first about was cardboard when his grandpa made it. And I decided to analyze it more and learn more down the road. I finally learned how to make belt making, made successful, make more belts for clients and sell and more process, successful, more different designs and been fell in love with making belts since then. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, how long has that been since that first cardboard belt till now? He was a little kid, maybe nine, made the cardboard and been looking for it since then. I still have it. Awesome. Awesome. So like, like 20 years, 30 years? Like 20, 30, how many years? You are nine, so you're now 46, so probably 30 years, about 30. little over 30 years ago. Wow, okay. That is, that's some experience. Um, has your technique, has your tools, uh, technology changed a lot since you really got into it doing real belts. Has your technology changed a lot ever since you got into it? 
like the tools you use it for. Yes. I've changed machines, making belts, tooling, handwork, things been changed with leather. They got new tools, got things that he needed. They change over time. You know, they're okay. not the same stuff that he used over and over. It just changes every time he uses them. All right, so, understood. Gotcha. Um, with that being said, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I'm aware of a lot of belt makers and they send me lots of pictures. Is it harder today with all that technology to stand out as a craftsman or has it made it easier? Is it harder to stand out today with that technology or is it easier? Really, it's still difficult to watch the machine. Sometimes they mess up and you have to go back and then got to fix it and then you got to go back, make sure they correct. And then sometimes they go through, so it takes forever. He uses the CNC machine to engrave. So it takes a lot of work. Understood. Understood. Um, as you said, it takes a lot of work. Uh, what is the average start to finish time for a single belt? What is the average start to finish time for a single belt? About seven weeks process to complete. Okay. It's a slow process. It's not like a quick process. We got to make sure the design works. We got to make sure everything is done correctly to move on to the next step. Leather work, cut out, and put them on the leather and back suit and all those stuff. It okay. Takes about seven weeks. Understood. So, so you're putting a lot of time, effort, and yourself into it. Do you give any kind of guarantee or warranty on the belt you sell? Do you give any kind of guarantee or warranty on the belt you sell? I promise to pump, fin always finish my work to make sure they get the belt. All my clients been happy with it since for a long time and Toby hit very hard and we've been struggling since then because uh, people are not making money and so we're trying to get back on our feet to get things back up and running again. Okay, so can very well understand that. We guarantee the belts are at their satisfied and that they're happy with uh, the work that he made. Okay. And that's why we make sure they're, Mom. if they're not satisfied, we're willing to work Mom. with them. What you're awesome. saying is that they're durable. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that they're durable, right? Yes. So if I hit Mick Foley in the head, it's not going to break. Mom, he said, so if I were to hit Nick Foley in the head, it won't break. No, no. <laughs> it's hard. It would be hard to break. No way. They're still good. Okay. Awesome. I love to hear that. Um, you know, speaking about Mick Foley, he's part of our TKN network here where Indie Tales airs. Um, uh, Mick Foley is part of his network. Oh, cool. So it, it, we, we have a lot of uh, former wrestlers, uh, you know, with the network. Some of them are going to be appearing here on Indie Tales. But my question to you, Brad, is uh, individuals or promotions. What are your top five individuals or promotions you've made belts for?
one of them is on my homemade. Um, one we made one for XWE, which is Extreme Wrestling Promoters in our local uh, town that we used to live in, Ohio. Okay. We donated it to them. Was the oh, first go. Nice. And what was the other one? In Kentucky, um, Elliot Wrestling Agency. We can't remember exactly the name. It's in Kentucky. K P W E K P E. Yeah, again. K. It's in Kentucky. Elliot Wrestling uh, Promoter. Okay. Okay. He's not sure exactly the name, but it was in That's Kentucky. Fine. And PWF. Okay. I believe it's in Indy, Indiana. Okay. We had another a client in Kentucky. We had many orders from Kentucky. Awesome. We had one from New York, which is SPW. All right. All right. Awesome. So so getting around, especially the East Coast, um, anything West Coast or international? Anything West Coast or international? Or international? You made one for Canada. Mm -hmm. We've made one for Canada. Okay. Up north, uh, east coast. Okay. Okay. What, like Ontario area? And west would be Texas. Texas. Okay. So you, you're getting all around there. I like hearing that. Um, have you made any for a particular individual? Have you ever that made out? any for a particular individual? We're not really, we're not sure because we've okay. made so many of them. Well, I can see on pushing, you know, 30 years, that's a lot of belts out the door. So, yeah. Um, He's made belts since 2011. Okay. And he's been involving them. So they're not the same back in 2011. Absolutely. So I understand that. Back in 2011, he was making them with snaps okay like those snaps that you okay I see the over, yeah now he's able to weld them on the back of it and put it on the leather like okay can you show us one 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 of the yes. newer ones okay There's no snap on this one okay so it's actually welded on the back to yeah. the leather yeah. okay this awesome one's gold plated Nice. Um, now, just, just for my own own knowledge here, well, everybody's knowledge. So we got a, we're going to have a lot of people watching this. Uh, you do regular size belts. I mean, that you can yeah, use we do regular with... size belts. Yes, we do. Do you have one that we can see? Yes. Uh, which this one? Yeah. Oh, this one is this for our, uh, our own. Okay. We do this for entertaining. Okay, I like it. Oh, this was for RWE. Okay, no, it looks good. It looks good. Exciting. I like it. And that's more the one of the later ones that's welded on the back. Uh, that's one of the. Uh, what'd you say? Is that one of the later ones where it's welded on the back and not snapped? I didn't notice any snaps. Uh, there's no snap. Okay. Okay. Awesome. No, this doesn't have a snap on it. It's welded. Okay. The one the very first belt we made, we have them here. That snap. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see one of those. We keep this one because this one is signed by a couple of wrestlers. This okay. Is the first That's... belt we've made. 
back. Okay, that's got an old school fire. vibe to it right there. Yeah. Okay, I can't make out the signature. Who is it? Uh, who is it? This one is Wood Warrior. Okay. It was signed by him in person. Nice. 2011. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have uh, Bushwhacker Luke. Okay. Okay. That's impressive. I like that. No, very good. Yeah, Bushwhacker Luke, HOF, Hoff, Hall of Fame. Awesome. Um, let me ask you this, Brad. The 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 belt you said, oh, we got a little one here. Yeah. WWE Hoff. Uh, oh, is that Bushwhacker again? Who is that? Luke. Uh, is Bushwhacker Luke? Bushwhacker Luke. Okay, I thought that's what it was. Um, Brad, let me ask you. Oh, no, go ahead. We're doing show and tell. I'm, I'm good with that. We like seeing, yeah. seeing these things. Because I'll tell you what, there's going to be a lot of wrestling fans. There's going to be a lot of wrestlers, promotions, you know, looking at this show uh, as it uh, plays out on YouTube. Um, so big question. Uh, i got a couple more, and then we're going to have to wind it up. The one you first showed me that is kind of like your house belt. Uh if I said, hey, I really like that, make me one, what's my outlay? How much is that going to cost me? Um, how much would the first belt you showed him cost if you made it for him? About 450 to 600 because four millimeter... Two millimeter would be cheaper. If you go four millimeter, it'd be a little bit more. Okay. It depends on the thickness of the metal that you want. Well, and leather, real leather, between four fifty to six hundred. Okay. So, but that's 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 a good quality belt. I mean, any yeah. any independent guy would love to walk out with that over his shoulder, headed this to the ring. Been here since 2011, so I'm sure it's pretty durable. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. All right. Um, one other thing I wanted to delve into, uh, Brad. You know, you're uh, you have a hearing disability. How have how have you made it through life? What's your story? coming through life and being where you're at dealing with your hearing disability. What's your story on your hearing disability and how have you gone through life? He says his mom was sick and caused him to be born deaf. He used hearing aids just to hear sound Try to relive, lift, but it didn't work. But here's a lot of sounds like knocking, airplane, things like that. He grew up, he went into deaf school. He did a lot of sign language in deaf school. Um, he doesn't prevent his hearing, his disability from doing what he can do. Um, there's no difference from, you know, going to work and stuff. You'd be able to do anything. Okay. It's not it's not preventing him from enjoying what he loves to do. I love so hearing that. I love hearing that. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I love hearing that. Uh, you know, everybody out there has something going on. Yours, you know, it's it's noticeable. Uh, but I I'm I'm happy that, you know, you've uh, you've made the strides, you don't let it hold you back. So props to you on that. Uh so I guess last thing, man. Uh, well, let me ask you this. this you piqued my curiosity. As a wrestler, I wrestled for 31 years, but I always had a nine to five. I wasn't willing to just, you know, throw all chips in and, and go after it. And that's, that's on me. But I always had a nine to five. Do you carry a nine to five along with the belt making uh, business? Do you carry a nine to five while uh, doing a belt making business? Do you? Regular job. Um, okay, so do you carry a nine to five and do belt making, or do you just do belt making? 
like do you regular job nine to five do you like actually go to work he just mainly do belt making he doesn't okay work. he just does belt making uh, okay so that is your bread and boys doing okay so that is your bread and butter then he said that is your bread and butter then yeah okay all right well uh want to run wow want to wind this up in about a minute so the last minute brad i'm giving to you tell the indie tales audience the entire new network audience why anybody wanting a wrestling belt should get it from you it's all yours brother um so why should anybody like watch uh, that is watching right now um, why should they buy the belt from him? Because I can develop to support my family and show that I can make belts for people, show that deaf people can do it too. He wants to show that I'm pretty awesome, that he can make some belts. Okay. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so uh, we're going to wind it up. Uh, Brad, M Melissa, Nathan, definitely appreciate you being here. Uh, this is a recorded segment, folks. So, uh, you know, you're going to see this when you see it. Uh, but I will let you guys know on that. Uh, in the meantime, for everyone here at Indie Tales and TKN, Thank you all for being here and sharing your story on belt making. Greatly appreciate it. All right, folks. <clears throat> like I said, that was a little different. Had a little different spin, but we are all inclusive uh, at Indie Tales. And I like to think that the independent wrestling scene remains that way. It's, uh, it's always been in the forefront of inclusion uh, in my experience. Always an exception, but as, as a whole, it's always done that. Um, I will say this. Uh, I've been putting it off for uh, a few years. I'm going to get around to it. I want to get a retirement belt that I design. Thank you, Avi. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you, brother. Um, and I'll tell you what. I'm going to get mine from Brad Platt. So <clears throat> just to recap, uh, you can go back, watch this again. I think it was... Uh, I think it was, a, you know, and nothing I did. I think it was a dang good interview that if you want to catch it again, pop on our YouTube channel, check it out. It's going to be there for a while. Speaking of YouTube, please don't forget tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Uh, we have a uh, episode, I believe, 219 of The Green Room featuring the celebrity debate. And uh, we have a, a, a golden era wrestler on there in the name of Jerry Briscoe, also a current MLB pitcher, uh, Bryce Wilson, and uh, star of film and TV, Todd Bridges. Uh, with that said, uh, we have... Uh, we have something else coming up. We've got the amazing Joe Ricitano and the voiceover. But I'm going to throw one thing out before I turn it over to that. You notice at the beginning of that interview, I said, uh, and it, it's uh, ASL, American Sign Language. Uh, I don't, I don't speak it. I, I don't, uh, I don't have it. I wish I did. So it's kind of scientifically proven. I'll say kind of, it just is that babies little tiny kids can learn sign language very easily. I would love to see an initiative to teach kids worldwide sign language so we would all be able to communicate no matter where we come from uh, or, you know, what disability we might have. I'd call it the Brad Platt movement, but that's just me. But anyway, this is it for another exciting, hopefully, episode of Indie Tales. Joe Ricitano and the voiceover is next. After that, you can have a slice of life. And uh, after that, you can get some uh, roasted fill on get, get, get your fill. So we'll see you next time on Indie Tales. Thank you.